Hey, what a great day to paint this is. Why, you say? Well, this painting has been a long time coming. Not only because it's a subject I've been meaning to paint, but because I rarely dabble into the world of animals or bugs or whatever you want to call this. So you'll be on the journey with me. Now, this is such a cliche painting. And yes, I took the cliche reference photo to make the cliche painting. Oh, and it was no mean feat taking this picture. These dudes move crazy. And yes, I took that picture. I'm like that. But that's besides the point. Back to what I was talking about before. The old bee in the flower trick gets them every time. It's one of the oldest tricks in the book, honestly. And I was kind of ashamed to be doing this trick at first, but of course I've put my own spin on this and things like this exist for a reason. It's because it works. So in the end, I felt that I did it justice in my own unique way. Now, if there's two things I'm not comfortable painting, it's leaves and living things. And no, I didn't just make that up for the video. I truly despise painting leaves. So I truly had a formidable battle ahead of me. Wow, such big words. But when you head into the uncharted territories of painting subjects that you aren't comfortable with, the best thing that you can do is fall back on your fundamental painting process. So for example, I paint dark to light, I use an underpainting, and when I paint more complex compositions, I tend to paint from background to foreground and from the more simplistic subject to the more obscure subject. Guys, don't skip English class because these words are rolling off the top of my head so effortlessly, but I digress. I find that no matter how difficult the subject may seem, whenever I fall back on my process that I do, it eliminates that fear of the unknown because I know that if I do my process like how I do most of my other paintings, then it, it'll possibly more than likely turn out how I expect it to or want it to. Sort of a security blanket of sorts, which I've never owned one. I'm, again, built different, of course. And now on to my favorite part of the painting and of most paintings that I do, which is the highlights or the details portion, which I've done all the, the dirty work, the grimy work, and now all I have to do is build up the highlights. If you're interested in my process of building up the highlights, I do have a class on Skillshare about this down in the description. And is it just me, or does this yellow on yellow on yellow look very satisfying? I believe there's a word for it. Well, I've been on one with the vocabulary, so let's try. There's something so coherent about this analogous color scheme yeah you should go look those words up that's some good stuff right there now there's two main things right now that are bothering me about my painting which is my b looks pretty bold right now which i mean that, that's fine it, it comes with the beginning processes of painting it, you're not gonna like it at first and also the background looks like i don't even want to tell you what it looks like but it rhymes with scoop. But we're getting there, so I guess that's all that matters. So I'm just continuing to highlight the leaves here, which again, I despise. But I'm applying this almost white color to the places where it's visible in the reference photo. And not only because it's in the reference photo, but because I need this highlight to make this stand out from the background. So I'm just brushing it everywhere, making it seem natural. And what you're noticing here 
is that I paint very loose, as they call it. So up close, my stuff isn't going to look too pretty until you step back. But, oh, now we're on to my real favorite part of the painting. So whatever I said before, throw that out the window. Because look how satisfying this is. Yes, I am excited for applying paint with a palette knife. Yeah, I know, but I mean, you have to keep it exciting somehow. And what better way than to apply thick amounts of paint to the canvas? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying. Okay, now that we're past that, I'm trying to make this bee stand out as much as possible and put in as much detail as possible again in my loose way I'm not going for exactly a tight realism here but I'm slowly building up the texture so that my final painting will stand out and look interesting which funny I say that I described this in my previous video video about me painting some cool textures so if you want to check that out, that'll be in the note card that I'm putting up there right now and at the end of this video. So that's two times I plugged, so no excuses. Look how rustic my B is looking right now. And no, rustic isn't another word for ugly. Especially in this case, because look at this. It stands out. I'm putting the final highlights on there. It looks pretty unique. What more could you ask for? Now scratch my first and second favorite parts of the painting process because this is the real favorite part of the painting process and I promise this is the last one. It's just the final details using thick amounts of paint, putting in those last elements that sort of bring it to life I mean just look at how he's coming together now that I'm reaching the conclusion of the video and putting the final details on there I ask that you like and subscribe if you like the content I'm doing and you find it interesting what's keeping you see ya